Hello guys, um, now we're back, kind of show you where I've been, what I've gotten done so far, not a lot, this will be the power supply, uh, I've got it uh, pretty much at least mocked up, uh, these are the capacitors, that's coming out here. I still got to work on these here. These are the wires that go to, there's two chokes. They're good. I just got to clean the wires up a little bit. Got the rectifier hooked up and wired in. This was originally with the unit, so I decided to use it. And then this is the supply for the A supply here. And, uh, did have a 20 amp fuse in there. I need to figure out something for a little lot, lot less amperage. I don't think this thing needs that much. Still got to clean the cord up a little bit. Now it's got a little fraying on it, um, but that's just the very outside coating. And when I was messing with this, uh, working on this part here and getting it painted up and cleaned up, I found out this thing's got several layers of insulation. So. Um, this is just a very outside. It just makes it kind of look old. Got to clean this up yet. I got one side kind of started, but switch does work. And I'm going to kind of clean the plugs up and make them look a little better. This is the original baseboard that it was on, so I thought I'd make use of it. And then I um, put some feet on it. So now I still got a. Uh, this was originally strictly for B, but I found out that, uh, and the main information I was trying to find was something a little more uh, information on the B, type BH cold rectifier tube and how much current it can handle. Well, it turns out it's quite a healthy tube, so uh, it really was designed for uh well, a complete battery, battery eliminator system, um, supply A, B, and C voltages. I still got to do a little more since I'm going to be supplying uh, uh, some A voltages and stuff coming off this transformer. I have to build up a resistor bank, so I looked around. I had some... Uh, pieces of insulating board that I can make up a resistor board and then I'll set it back in here someplace and I can feed that. Now the C voltage we're going to do with the battery and the main reason for that is is the cable that originally went to all the batteries only had A and B for it. There was no C voltage to it since it was doing that on chassis and it's a good cable I just don't have enough wires so we'll just do we only need 45 volts, so that's only five 9 volt batteries. Uh, the chassis, you know, I'm getting a few more parts on it, getting stuff cleaned up. Uh, got the tube shields cleaned up and the uh, coil shields cleaned up and stuff. And uh, anyway, I did, like I said, I did find the information on the BH tube, and uh, there was a great little article on it. Uh, by Raytheon and they show a power supply for all three voltages so um, I'll probably make use of theirs uh, schematic somewhat I'll do some changes to it a little bit but primarily um, what I'll probably I'm going to eliminate C because we're not going to be using that so I don't need this in here uh, but as far as the rest of it, uh, I'll probably not have any pots in it, any potentiometers. I'll just, uh, I've got enough power resistors to load the system down and, and set my uh, resistances so that we'll be real close. Uh, their AC filament supply going to the tubes is coming off of here. And then what this is for is to reduce hum since this was designed to eliminate battery radios and it was designed at a time when uh, there wasn't a lot of tubes out there that could handle both AC and DC 
on their filaments. If you put AC on them, they, they would generally get home. But the thing that I found real encouraging, because at, at one point I thought it was going to have to run a full A supply out of here to get it rectified, but I don't have to do that because they talk about supplying current for filament of a 112 or a 171 tube. Now, 171 tube or 71 tubes are AC-DC uh, filaments, but the 112 is strictly DC, and they're saying that this will work without any problems with this deal here. It will clear out the hum so that you can run a DC tube. So, and this thing only had, <coughs> excuse me, five volts going to it for filament. Now the uh, RF tubes are actually 3.3 volt but they took care of that on the chassis. There's uh, some wire wound resistors that feed these filaments and that's how they drop from 5 to 3.3 volts. The 112, two, I got two of those and the 71's both are 5 volt filaments so I'm good there so I end up only using just one section of this which is a uh, it's five two and a half and one and a half so I'll just be using the five volts on it I did do a load test on it um, it's a healthy transformer so it can handle anything I throw at it as far as this one goes I haven't done one on this one but I think it's probably pretty healthy too um, so anyway, that's where we're at. Uh, for those who are trying to help me on this, uh, I haven't got over to the antique radio forums yet, um, but uh, I'll try to get over there here. I got to set up some place to put the pictures, unless I figure out that you can take them right directly off your computer and show them guys. Uh, and maybe that's so. I don't know. The other thing, uh, but I appreciate all your help, and uh, like I said, the biggest thing I was concerned about was the tube and exactly what it was designed to do. Um, they don't have a real good picture of it, but that's the tube right there. Um, and you can kind of get an idea. It, the anode is a big cap that goes over, and then the two leads coming up here is the cathodes. Uh, these tubes are rather interesting how they operate, but because um, the basic theory of operation for just a short period of time and uh, about a half a second, it actually does not rectify uh, until the gas in here gets fully ionized. Once it does, then the tube starts rectifying. And basically, they're well, short of just standard stuff that uh, you could destroy a tube with, like breaking the glass, they're almost indestructible. They, you know, they don't have a heater in them to burn out, and they have no cathode coating. These cathodes and the anode, what makes the difference between them is actual physical size, and that's how they operate. Uh, it's it has nothing to do with, uh, you know, like a coating on the cathode that emits electrons. So anyway, that's pretty much where I'm at. I'm going to continue working on this and um, and see what I can do. I I thought I'll probably uh, I'm gonna try it anyway. If they don't end up on there, well, you'll know I failed at my video editing. Uh, because I'm really new at that point, but it looks like the program I use I can put some pictures on, and I got some pictures of uh, of the factory of Atwater Kent back in uh, in the 20s. They took a series of pictures, and I'm gonna put the website where I got those pictures from in the description. There's a whole bunch of them. I'll probably just put up a couple, three, and uh, let you kind of see them. And uh, 
Atwater Kent's history is pretty interesting. The one thing I did find out though of several hours of researching it was the fact that there's a lot of controversy in it. Seems like every site that you find that says anything about them and does a history on them, they're all different. Uh, some of the basic things they agree on was that, you know, he started up at Water Kent, that he'd been to college, but he didn't like math, and plus he was trying to run a business at the same time, and so he didn't do too good on his three attempts at college. But he still ended up 10 years later getting a honorary doctorate degree and the engineering main engineering hall that's on that campus today is named after him so he might not have been the greatest student but he did make an impression uh, some of the other things about him is the fact that he is the inventor of the spark ignition system or points ignition system which was used clear up until we went to solid state ignition so if you find an old car or remember an old car that had points in it, that was Atwater Kent's invention. And that was his first company and from that company he uh, took the pro uh, a lot of money and started up the radio business and uh, continued growing. Uh, as far as when he you know, shut things down, really I think more it was more that he just did not want to reduce his quality more than anything else. Um, I don't really think it had anything to do with uh, any type of unionization. Uh, considering from what I could find out he was one of the highest paying employers and also one of the few employers that actually offered benefits. So and uh, some information I found from some employees that did, uh, you know, talk about things after he closed things down. A lot of them, the, the consensus was, was one of the best times of their life was working there. So anyway, uh, one of the pictures will show a gal, well, there are several of them actually, uh, but they're winding coils, and what I found real interesting was you know, they're using a, the coil winders motorized, but they're winding three coils at a time, which I found rather interesting. You know, a lot of people have enough troubles with just one coil. Try three at a time on a motorized machine. So, and it probably wasn't running at an extreme slow pace. It was probably running pretty good speed. So, if I can get those pictures up, otherwise, anyway, you can go to the website and, and, and look them up. And uh, like I said, I'll put it in the description. And there, there's actually a whole bunch of pictures. So it's a. Uh, that's where we're at. And I think I'll be cutting this off right here and continue doing some work on this after I get. Uh, more of it wired up and get this pretty much squared away. Um, oh, you guys can see it and everything. And I figured this will set down in the bottom of the cabinet where I think the batteries used to sit. So it, there's plenty of room down there. So anyway, the tube's on its way. It shipped out today, I, so it should be here, so I can do a full test on it. And in the meantime, I'll also continue working on this and getting it starting to button up some. And that's where we're at. So, thanks for your comments, thanks for your help, and, uh, and stuff. And thank, thanks to my new subscribers. And uh, I gotta get back to some of you guys' comments and answer them. I, haven't got to today yet but I will and uh, so well thanks for watching guys I'll see you on the next video